Kucho. Ba, ba to kai ba chum phia sa ra ba yeung ba to tiet hai to ta ni ba do bi ka chun te sa pri nya rong an ra chiet da mai mien la ma te yo bol da mien bam nong chong ni yi som cheng yo Thank you, Mr. President, Your Honors. Um, uh, the defense have raised uh, a number of issues. We, we are proceeding on the basis that we will not be filing a written response to this, so that we will use this opportunity to make sure we, we've responded to the uh, extensive and uh, numerous issues that have been raised. Um, one issue I, I want to start with, um, um, the international co-prosecutor indicated that we are certainly open to discussion of uh, what order do we do future segments uh, of this trial. Um, what we are uh, not in agreement with is the suggestion I believe the defense is making that we stop the current segment of tram cop because it is part of the southwest zone and instead switch to a different zone, the central zone, and go directly to the first January dam. And, and let me tell you why that is. Um, first, the defense overlooked the central zone. Uh, the central zone is a major area of investigation in case four, um, including including the security center that is right next to the first January Dam, the security center that is part of the allegations uh, of the first January Dam section. That security center is part of the case for investigation, along with other central zone sites. So far, fortunately, OCIJ has not done a lot of new interviews relating to uh, that security center or that touch upon the first January Dam. So, as we have indicated to you, uh, there is a fairly small number of documents, but we do not know what they are going to do between now and the end of the investigation. We also now have suspects who are parties who will be making investigative requests of their own. So that is, that is one issue you need to be aware of. But I think even more important than that, um, Based on the planned order of this trial, uh, the international co-investigating judge has given priority to certain disclosures, and he has given priority to ensure the disclosure of all documents related to Tram Kok, Prank Chan, Southwest. He has not yet authorized disclosure of all the interviews that have been conducted relating to the central zone. That has not happened yet. So what the defense is proposing is that we stop a segment in which they have received disclosure of documents. The documents relating to the Southwest Zone, to Trampak, have been disclosed. And that we switch to a segment for which disclosure has not taken place. That makes no sense at all. And that leads to my next point. The argument they've made that these disclosures are somehow violating their fair trial rights. The exact opposite is true. The purpose of these disclosures is to ensure that the defense's fair trial rights are respected, to ensure that they have access to relevant statements and in evidence that has come up in the case three and case four investigations. To go forward with a crime site from a zone where all the evidence, all the statements have not been disclosed would raise far greater issues than to continue with one where the statements have been disclosed. I think that should be a self-evident proposition. Let me respond to a few discrete issues that have been raised. Uh, uh, the question of whether there are other documents in addition, addition to uh, witness or civil party statements. Um, there are some. We do review those. Uh, however, I can tell you uh, that the contemporaneous documents, if you will, uh, that are on those case files are largely the same. 
that we met the ones from case two. We met them home. There are a few instances in which um, uh, OCIJ has gone to DC Cam uh, to, to look maybe for additional documents from DC Cam. Those are publicly available documents. We do review those. Uh, if it was appropriate, we would, we would include them. But we're talking about publicly available documents here. Uh, OCIJ has not come across, uh, at least to our knowledge, a new batch of previously unknown uh, documents related to um, The issue of disclosing these documents piecemeal by segment. Let me emphasize that uh, our initial request to OCIJ made back almost a year ago was to disclose all of the relevant statements. They were unwilling to do that. They have reasons, concerns about their ongoing investigation. So when we came back at their suggestion, with the new request, uh, when, when the uh, date for trial was set here, we again requested disclosure of all relevant documents. And only as an alternative, in view of the concerns they expressed, did we give a list of priorities, identifying for them the planned order of this trial, identifying for them uh, a subject that the new chair of defense had uh, uh, raised in the uh, appeal of case 0021 as documents that they would be interested in. We did our best to, to give them uh, a, a list of, uh, of priorities. Uh, in view of the fact that they were unwilling to disclose all the documents at the same time. But in the end, and I cannot say this enough, all we can do is make the request to the investigating judges. What is disclosed and when it is authorized is not our decision. And when I see motions like this that continue to suggest that somehow this is our uh, plan, uh, uh, that we're conspiring with OCIJ to uh, dump documents on them. Uh, but that is a hint to you that this is not a meritorious motion. We are not at all opposed in the event statements are disclosed later after a witness is testified, if they legitimately raise an important issue that wasn't covered, make that motion. Make a specific reasoned motion. They have the opportunity, as we do, where new witnesses come up in this investigation to make Rule 87 for requests. And where they are important uh, witnesses that would help the trial chamber, my expectation is you will, you will entertain them. There are remedies here. Having a delay is not going to uh, avoid any of these issues. The, the argument was made here that give us more time so we don't have to call witnesses. We can't, that will not be achieved because this is, these are ongoing investigations. And we don't know who is going to be interviewed. We don't know who is being interviewed by OCIJ today. They could be interviewing a trial witness as we sit here. And we don't so we have to deal with these situations on a case-by-case -case basis. We are open to where there is good cause demonstrated. Our belief is that there simply has not been good cause demonstrated here. I've already told you that there are, of the new uh, group of 100, approximately 100, there are only 10 interviews that relate to Chen. The defense are certainly entitled to review the others to confirm that. And I'm not saying that those other interviews aren't relevant to the overall case. Of course they are. That's why we disclose them. But this is going to be a long trial. There is time for them to take that into account. My, my overall submission to you is we are nearing the end of this first trial segment. Now is not the time for the delay. 
ហើយឡូវនេះទៅជាដល់ប្រេសនាសុំអោយពញ្ញាទៅវិញយើងគួរតែបន្តទៅមុខទៀតមកពេលយើងបញ្ចប់ផ្នែកនៅក្នុងរ
comme dans Thaïlande. C'est en grande partie parce que les conditions imposées par le juge d'instruction sont impossibles à respecter. Ou plutôt, si nous les respectons, nous ne sommes plus en mesure de faire correctement notre travail. Alors, je ne sais pas si quelqu'un du bureau des juges d'instruction nous écoute aujourd'hui. Je ne sais pas s'il serait approprié que, proprio motu, de même, il décide d'élargir ou de, de relax les conditions de divulgation. Mais les conditions de divulgation qui nous sont proposées à nous et au Conseil de la Défense sont Impossible. Et je dois dire que je suis un peu choquée de voir la défiance qui existe vis-à-vis d'avocats qui sont comptables devant leurs ordres professionnels respectifs. Nous avons tous des obligations professionnelles à respecter, de déontologie, de confidentialité. Nous, nous sommes avocats, nous ne sommes pas voyous, et je pense que si on nous dit que les documents sont confidentiels, nous aurons, il en va de notre responsabilité, la possibilité de respecter la confidentialité qui nous est imposée. Donc, au jour d'aujourd'hui, alors que deux des suspects ont été mis en examen in absentia, nous considérons que ces conditions n'ont plus lieu d'être et que, de leur propre chef, les co-juges d'instruction devraient relâcher ces conditions pour nous permettre de faire correctement notre travail. Si ces conditions sont levées, eh bien, tout notre travail d'analyse sera considérablement facilité et dès lors, nous pourrons aborder sereinement la suite de ce procès. Nous étions prêts, nous l'avons dit à la Chambre hier, nous étions prêts pour l'audition du témoin 803. Nous ne sommes cependant pas opposés à ce que l'audition de 803 soit repoussée selon les modalités qui ont été proposées par la Défense pour nous permettre et permettre à la Défense un temps de préparation supplémentaire. Nous ne sommes pas non plus opposés à ce que le prochain segment soit le segment du 1st of January Dam, mais je viens d'écouter notre confrère euh, du bureau du procureur qui vient de nous dire que cela n'est peut-être pas une bonne idée. Donc là aussi, cela prouve l'intérêt de ce TMM d'aujourd'hui. Nous avons besoin d'être plus informés sur le processus de divulgation pour que ensemble nous trouvions une solution pour que ce procès aille de l'avant. En tout état de cause, et je le redis, pour nous, il est impératif que nous allions de l'avant et nous faisons confiance à la Chambre pour trouver la meilleure solution pour que le procès aille de l'avant dans le respect des droits de toutes les parties. Deux propositions, que nous soyons plus informés du processus de divulgation de manière plus régulière, que nous soyons plus informés du déroulement de l'instruction pour comprendre quels sont les, autres, les nouveaux éléments de preuve qui pourraient arriver, notamment sur le segment que nous sommes en train d'étudier. Et une autre proposition qui a déjà été faite un petit peu par la Défense, c'est que la Chambre s'implique plus dans ce processus de, de, de divulgation. Et dans le contrôle de ce processus de divulgation, nous sommes d'avis que la Chambre pourrait explorer des voies juridiques qui vous permettraient, Monsieur le Président, Madame, Messieurs les juges, d'avoir un plus grand rôle dans le contrôle de ce processus de divulgation. Je répondrai ensuite point par point euh, au, au filing de la défense de Nunches qui nous permettra aussi d'éviter de faire une réponse par écrit. Et je souhaiterais aborder rapidement la question des Khmer Krom. J'avoue avoir du mal à comprendre euh, la position de la défense de Nunchia sur ce point et pour la raison que je vais exposer à l'instant, la Chambre est saisie INREM. Vous êtes saisie de faits qui sont mentionnés dans l'annexe de la deuxième décision de disjonction qui définit les paramètres de ce procès. Cette annexe, c'est le document E301-9-1.1. Cette annexe liste les paragraphes de l'ordonnance de clôture dont vous êtes saisi. Dans ces paragraphes, le paragraphe 320, qui est sous Tramcoc et sous le traitement des groupes spécifiques, mentionne de manière très claire la question des Khmer Krom. Vous êtes, de fait, 
saisie de la façon dont les Khmer Krom ont été traités dans la, dans la coopérative de Tramcock. Si vous ne ne vous considérez pas saisi de cette question, ce serait un déni de justice et ce serait, je pense, un motif d'appel pour le procureur que nous, que nous soutiendrions bien volontiers. Vous êtes saisi de ces faits. Il faudra donc nécessairement que les preuves relatives à ces faits soient étudiées par la Chambre. Quant à la qualification juridique que ces faits recevront, eh bien ce sera à vous de le déterminer et au parti d'argumenter pour savoir si tel ou tel crime est retenu en l'espèce. Nous sommes d'avis qu'il est particulièrement intéressant que la Chambre se, se penche notamment sur la question du crime de persécution pour savoir si le traitement des commerces dans la coopérative de Trump seront ou non constitutif du crime de persécution. Donc, encore une fois, vous êtes saisi une REM, vous n'avez pas le choix, nous n'avons pas le choix, ce n'est pas le choix du procureur, vous êtes saisi une REM, il faudra que les preuves sur la question des Khmer Krom soient entendues dans cette salle d'audience pendant le dossier de, de cela, me, cela me paraît impossible de faire autrement. Un commentaire enfin sur le statut des procès verbaux qui sont versés par le processus de divulgation. La défense de Mouchia semble s'inquiéter du sort réservé à ces procès verbaux. De notre côté, nous sommes très clairs sur le fait qu'à partir du moment où ces procès verbaux sont versés à nos débats dans le dossier 2-2, ils deviennent des pièces du dossier 2-2, que s'ils sont correctement versés au débat selon les règles que nous gouvernent, eh bien vous pourrez vous servir de ces pièces pour forger votre conviction dans le cadre du délibéré. Point barre, il n'y a pas lieu de s'interroger sur le sort de ces procès verbaux. À partir du moment où ils sont versés à nos débats, ils font partie de notre dossier et vous pourrez vous servir de ces pièces pour forger votre conviction dans ce dossier. Pour nous, il n'y a aucun doute. Enfin, je voudrais simplement répondre au, apporter notre version euh, aux préoccupations de la défense sur euh, la question des ressources et euh, la possibilité pour les différentes parties à ce procès de mener de front euh, différentes tâches et notamment euh, l'analyse et les pièces euh, de ce procès. Je voudrais simplement rappeler à la Chambre, mais je sais vous le savez, mais dans la mesure où le, le TMM est public, il me semble important que les parties à l'extérieur de cette salle d'audience soient également au courant. Nous avons, nous, les co-avocats principaux, avec l'aide des avocats des parties civiles, une foule de tâches à gérer quotidiennement. Consultation, consultation avec les parties civiles, nous gérons un collectif de 3867 parties civiles, qu'il faut quand même que nous connaissons, que nous consultions. Nous gérons la question des réparations, qui est un chantier absolument colossal. Donc je puis dire vraiment clairement à la Chambre que le procès, la préparation du procès et les audiences représentent en gros 50% de notre travail. Pas plus. Ce qui nous attend à l'extérieur de cette chambre d'audience est colossal. Donc nous sommes aussi, nous-mêmes, concernés par le volume de travail généré par ce procès. Avec les conditions de restriction qui sont imposées pour l'analyse des documents qui sont divulgués, cela est très difficile de mener de front toutes ces tâches parce que nous ne pouvons pas compter sur nos stagiaires pour nous aider dans cette tâche. Mais si les conditions restrictives de divulgation sont allégées, nous espérons être en mesure de gérer toutes nos tâches de front pour que le procès puisse aller de l'avant. Je, je pense en avoir terminé et je pense avoir répondu à toutes les, les demandes de l'équipe de Mounchia. Je vous remercie, M. le Président. บ่าวคุณเอ่อในมนเปลได้องค์ 
tầm đầu chỉ trai cà phê bự lia dạng mai chứ nên không cà đại bị nứt mờ ai cả xa đại đạn thay thay ní đại mày miền là tập hiệp đại châu rùm mà sạm nà cà rứa có miền mày tại giờ bò dạng mai chứ bẹ pòn thì mày đang cà điệp chấm cà phê bự lia nên không đầm nà cà sạm nà cà này bị là nà cột bờ miền thầm chơi thầm chơi là trai chơi cầm phén và chạy và thay tiến No, this was clear enough, but I have an additional question which is related and the Defence Council might wish to answer both at the same time. Um, this only relates to the request to uh, postpone certain witnesses, you identify them as those in leading positions and specifically mention 803 and 809. Now, um, uh, I'm summing up the obvious. We have uh, two investigations in three and four that are ongoing. Nobody knows when they'll be finished. We've just heard that the disclosure out of these investigations will be ongoing, and it's impossible to predict on which segments of this current trial they might have an impact. Prosecution has told us, if I've understood that correctly, that they cannot identify any segment of the closing order here that would not be potentially impacted by any of these disclosures. Now, roughly against this background, and let's at the moment presume that adjoining the hearings until the end of the investigation in case three and four is not an option, <laughs> Until which point in time do you suggest to postpone these people in leading positions and specifically um, those two you have identified? Um, that's, that's, that's a good question. I, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm able to, to answer this question right now. What I, what I do know is that I think we will have opportunity to continue for a while with Krang Te Chan and Tom Kok. Uh, Tom Kok. We, uh, we still have some witnesses to go. We have a, a, a possible document hearing. Uh, maybe we have some additional um, crime-based uh, witnesses. So I don't think there's a necessity to stop immediately. Um, but the problem nevertheless remains, and you've indicated that, uh, that wherever we go in the next segment, it possibly might be uh, affected. So maybe the solution is um, that we as he is the only person who seems to, uh, to, to know, is that we have an additional trial management meeting inviting the international co-investigating judges, present him our problem and ask him, these are our crime sites, which do you think uh, will uh, have the least impact or the smallest impact on our ongoing uh, trial. Maybe that is a solution. I agree with the prosecution if they say that uh, the security center close to the north, uh, uh, the 1st January dam is being investigated. It doesn't make any sense to go to the 1st January dam. I agree. Uh, to be honest, we didn't really realize that. And, um, so it's very, it's very difficult right now to, to, for us to say if we have this time, then it will be fine. Um, I, I'm not sure how, how, how we will deal with that. In relation to the first question, um, I, I remember that the trial chamber itself in October last year um, postponed the beginning of the hearing with a week because we had just received, um, I, I believe, around 500 pages of the documents. Um, I, I don't think we, we, we can read any faster than, than you can, or you probably read the, the, the pages of the statements at the same speed. But if we take that as a, um, as a, as a, as a guideline, then obviously we'll, with 3,000 pages, we will be speaking about six weeks. That is, that I realize that's quite a long time. But of course, that still wouldn't solve the situation. Um, so maybe why... Uh, 
I, I just actually thought of that idea um, when you were formulating the question. Why don't we invite uh, Judge Harmon here, present him our problem, and ask him uh, what he would suggest that we do? Uh, otherwise, I don't really see any problem. Uh, to the solution. Um, Councillor, I'm not expecting you to come up with the solution. I just ask you yeah. if you Sorry. wanted to yeah. clarify that. But, um, uh, as a first reaction to your suggestion to invite investigating judge, he doesn't know either what the outcome of the investigation will be and what true, true, but he knows individual witnesses will say to various relevant points. True, but he, he determines the focus. He knows which security centers uh, he is investigating. I'm not asking, we don't, we're not asking, I think, uh, details as to what is happening, but if he is saying, uh, for instance, Oh Kan Seng uh, is part of my investigation, then maybe it doesn't make sense to go there. Maybe there is something he has just finished uh, and he can um, present us with relevant statements. I don't know. Um, but we have an expression in Dutch, it's called um, mopping the water while the tap is running. And that's what we are seeming to do. The water is flowing and we just keep on mopping it, but it just keeps on flowing. So it doesn't really make any sense. Um, so I don't know if I even ask, answer the questions. Just to clarify, six weeks, you're requesting six <laughs> weeks now? No, um, I'm basing myself upon what you uh, decided in October based on 500 pages. <laughs> បាទសមគមលោកវិធានខ្ញុំសូមឆ្លើយតបទៅនឹងសំដួលបលិចក្រមលោកស្រីចក្រមហ្វិនតាក់ទងទៅនឹងចំណុចមួយ <coughs> ដូច្នេះឯកសារទាំងឡាយដែលដាក់បញ្ចូលបន្ថែមដែលមានសហចក្រមអន្តរជាតិសំទោសសហចក្រមសើបអង្កេតអន្តរជាតិដែលធ្
នោះវាធ្វើឲ្យយើងប៉ះពលដល់ពេលវេលានៃ <cười> Sầm rạp dương, nông phê bạch bọn ní, dương dô tha cứ mùi rôi phía rôi hai Đại dương trời chùm nái từ lưu ca thơ ca châu rùm xạm nạ ca ní Vì phụ khu nông mùi sạp ở đá dương trời chùm nái phê buôn thang ngay từ hai châu rùm nông xạm nạ ca Hào dương biên phía tích tuyết bằng phót sầm rạp nông ca riêng chôm xạm nạ ca riêng chôm ai mơ bình đất ai kia xa tiền lại Đại cho bẹp bọn xạm nạ ca ní Đối chân này, viên miên đây tha dương mình ai miên phê vì liếp xây tiết đam bay chấm nai từ lưới cáp đến ai cả sa thế bà sân chia ông chấm luôn chấm ra mình bàn bắt đầu về việc liệu cướp còn xong rồi Mr. President, uh, if you allow me, I would like to briefly react to the issue of the, the Khmer Krom. Um, the way I understand the words of um, civil party lawyer, uh, and obviously she's coming from uh, the French system, uh, is that, if I understand her correctly, uh, it is, according to her, possible that the chamber, uh, at one point in time, convicts Nguyen Chia either for genocide of the Khmer Krom, or for crimes against humanity, for instance, in the form of persecution of extermination of the In other words, uh, if that is how I understood it, am I, when I speak to my client, for instance, tomorrow, am I supposed to tell them that that is a real possibility, yes or no? And that is the question. Uh, will you legally from the French procedural perspective, be entitled uh, to convict my client for these crimes, these international crimes in relation to the group of my I don't know the answer. I'm asking a clarification. I think my client uh, deserves this clarification. And I haven't heard uh, the prosecution give any reaction to the words of the official spokesperson of this court, I take it that Mr. Olsen doesn't say anything um, by himself, that he is instructed or that he gets guidance as to what he says. So that is uh, also how we understood all the procedural um, questions that arose uh, in 2000, 2010. If, if we see it completely wrong, uh, please tell us, uh, uh, and then we will uh, think of uh, measures that we should take in, re in relation to our strategy. But right now, I sincerely do not know if that is a possibility. First of all, just briefly, Mr. Larson is a spokesperson for the court, not for the prosecution. We do not uh, ask him to speak for us or provide him with any confidential information. So it, I think it's obvious to everyone that quoting that remark is absolutely useless. So that's why we didn't address it, because it's clearly on its face has no value. I would like to address the issue of the delay that the defense is asking for. In all of our discussions this afternoon, what's clear is this is an ongoing process. More disclosures are going to be coming. The defense asking now for a adjournment uh, would set an extremely bad precedent. The defense can divide up these statements among their staff and have each individual staff members uh, reading parts of those. I understand that they can't have interns, but they can have, they have many, several staff members on each team that can divide it up. Even if they don't get to a statement before the next witness, for example, if they find, and I don't believe they will, but if they find magically that there is in this material, Material, something that would be of 
would have affected their questions to witness 803, that it would have changed and they would have had a very relevant question to 803 because of that material that could have had a substantial effect on the trial, then they can make a motion later to, to have that witness recalled. And that's going to be have to, that's, we, we will have to deal with these in that manner because the disclosures are going to be ongoing. You can't adjourn every time there's a disclosure. Every time the defense claims when we do it, we're, what they want us to do, give them relevant material, then they can't say, oh, we've just been dumped with relevant material and now we need to stop the proceedings completely. So we would ask, Your Honors, to go forward on the case. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je voulais juste réagir à la à ce que vient de dire notre confrère Copé sur les Khmer Krom. Il utilisait le, le terme de génocide qui n'est pas un terme que j'ai employé, donc je ne sais pas si mes propos ont été mal traduits ou s'ils ont été réinterprétés par, par mon confrère. Ce que j'ai dit, c'est que vous êtes saisi de la question des Khmer Krom à Tramcock et qu'il vous appartiendra de décider de la qualification juridique, si qualification juridique il y a, et que dans les crimes qui sont concernés par Tramcock, il y a notamment le crime de persécution. Et nous avons déjà entendu dans le cadre de ce procès un Khmer Krom qui nous a dit qu'il avait été considéré comme un Vietnamien et avoir été traité de manière discriminante parce qu'il était perçu comme vietnamien. Le procès se déroule sous nos yeux, je ne peux pas en dire plus que ça, mais il me semble qu'à un moment, vous devrez nécessairement vous poser la question de savoir si le traitement des Khmer Krom, en tant que tel ou assimilé à une autre catégorie, revêt une qualification pénale ou non. បាទឥឡូវនេះ <coughs> បុគ្គលិកសន្តិសុខអ្នកបកប្រែភាសានិងបុគ្គលិកគំត្រូវនៃអង្គភាពផ្សេងផ្សេងទៀតដែលបានខិតខំអស់ពីកម្លាំងក